Ce lo chiama Pabli. Ce lo chiama Pabli. Ce lo Well, it's officially termed the Monday after the weekend that was, and why not? Because so much has happened. And in fact, you know what? We've got to congratulate the victors on the weekend as far as the Nedbank Cup is concerned. Maybe somewhere, somehow, that gets lost in everything that has happened. And we've got to congratulate, firstly, Free State Stars for making it to the final of the Nedbank Cup. And secondly, we've got to congratulate... Maritzburg United for making it through to the final of the Nedbank Cup. We'll get to the football, we'll get to the tactics, we'll get to the breakdown of the controversial moments as well with Mr. Spot on right here on the show. This is the official time where we're going to start right up until the end of the season. So make sure that extra time, top of the hour at 20 hundred hours, you do join us from now until the end of the season. Now, that's going to be the hashtag. We're going to keep it burning right throughout this hour and a half here because we want to be interactive. We want your thoughts. We want your opinions. And if you were at the Moses Mabita Stadium, even better, where you were positioned, what you saw, what you experienced, what your family situation was like. You were there with the kids. You were there with elders. What was there? What was happening? What did you witness? And how are you feeling about it now on the Monday? Those and a whole lot more is what we want to engage in today. Now, we've got some very special guests here today. Let me start off with the regular faces that we see. On the far right, Juicy Lips. He survived. He's back. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Murawa. Jimmy <laughs> Dao Mpempe was never there. He feared something, and he's safe. Good to see you, sir. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Rob. All right, and of course, we've got to executive producer as far as the football all round, as far as Super Sport is concerned, Ulsfi Sumbanogam Bambo, who's here. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for having me. We had conversations straight after the game when everything started making sense. Mm. But you were sitting there in the director's chair, making the big decisions. Cables were pulled. We couldn't even do post-match interviews uh, with Steve Compello. We did half with look M.I.L. What was it like? Just give me, give me the human experience that you had sitting in that director's seat and fights believe it or not, it didn't happen when the violence broke out at the end. People started fighting as early as the first half. Yes. Um, it's always, for me, I always say, people who work in TV, you have to be abnormal in a bit. Mm. Uh, with everything that was happening from the first half, from the 25th minute, you know, there were some scuffles with the fans. Uh, I had to keep an eye on that and also to keep an eye on the game. Um, being a director on the day, you, you're responsible for not only what you put on air, but for everyone around you in terms of the safety and the mindset and everything. So when you have to keep the guys going and to tell them, guys, it's going to be okay. It's mm -hmm. going to be okay. But there comes a point where you have to make a call, a tough one, and you say, guys, for your safety, leave your stations, find a safe place. I think that what happened eventually at the end of the game. But as, 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 you, as, you, as you rightly mentioned, that from the first half, even, even before the first half, mm. you know, uh, if people remember the build-up, and I, I made a call to say, let's go to the 10 stars where people are coming into the stadium and, and find or gauge the mood. Mm. What are they prepared for when they're coming into the game? Mm. And, and those who watch the build-up will know that from the, from the minute we went live, mm. people were already having this mindset, what... They came there for. Right. Paul's right there because one of the major calls this man made before was that he would position me in a very different place to where we would position a person like myself playing a role on the touchline. So I was nowhere near the touchline. Wanted to get a sense of what the fans were coming in through the turnstiles. And we literally just chose a turnstile. Uh, you know, fans come in through many different turnstiles. Mm. We did not know even the people's names that we were going to talk to and engage in. They were just coming in. Others wanted to take just the photos of their surrounding as well. But it's quite important that randomly, just the gentleman that I picked to my left said something a bit of a mouthful. And when you listen again carefully, it might just lead you to thinking he came there for a purpose other than football. I know that uh, Kenya team is going to win tonight. As much as we are going to chase Kombela away tonight, uh, Kombela has to go uh, 
we are hoping that the Kata chief management will know that Kampala has to go. Because uh, it's it either it's a win or it's a loss, and that Kampala has to go. Why, why must way. he go, though? Because he's been because coaching he in the failed, overchange. He has failed us. He has failed us. Yeah. Kampala has failed us. So regardless, he came there for Kampala. That is the gist of what I get there. Yeah. Is that the same that you got? Yeah. Um, I think from that, in, in fact, funny enough, because I was not even supposed to be in Durban this weekend. And when I had to go um, stand in for one of my colleagues, I just got a sense that this game is bigger than what it's actually mm. supposed to be. And as I said, abnormally in my head, all these things came while I was driving to the game, you know. So a call like that to be made to say, prepare yourself to go to the 10 stars because something might, might happen. And obviously a lot happened in that game. And the, 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 duty, the duty of a broadcaster is, is to bring pictures which have to do with the beautiful game of football. Now at this stage, you got a couple of cameras that have been, that have been cut couple of cameras as well, as you can see. I don't know if he wants to go and become a DJ, but he's taking those headphones, uh, which might be pretty useless to any other commercial entity, and he runs away. Now, there are people beating up, kicking a camera. I mean, there's a lot of anger that goes into something like this. W what is that? Is that a person picturing that in their heads that could be the coach of Kaiser Chiefs? Like, what? Well, he's got that little piece of the camera there. And then what does he do with it? What's he going to do with it? Come Monday, what's, what is he physically and otherwise doing in something like this? It, it's sad, Robert. You, you know, I talk as a broadcaster, and we have to educate our, our fans. We go to the game to show beautiful pictures. First, first of all, we have to show a game. Hmm. And people enjoy watching the game in HD, nice angles. That's what we're there for. So in, in no means we are there to insult anyone when we put you on TV or when we show you on, we put a camera where the fans are. We're there to show the beautiful game. That is our mandate. It's always been like that. But you have to then take a step back and say, when people behave in this manner, do they actually understand the role of television or broadcaster in this manner? Mm. We, we, we will always, we are committed to making sure that we, we, we show PSL in a good light. That's what we're there for. And besides a lot of things that people don't see, there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes that we don't show people at home mm. because we have to choose to show the beautiful angle. It's always going to be that as the first priority for us. Mm. And you just have to become a psychologist eventually because the people who are working on this production were the same people who had to work on Sunday. On Sunday, I had to have a meeting with everyone mm. to say, guys, we have to go on with our lives. How do we then motivate mm. ourselves? How do we then tell ourselves that we have a job to do, which then becomes uh, what then we strive on? Mm. All right, and, and while we watch all of this, I mean, this is really expensive equipment here, Mr. Mbambo, and let's not shy away from that. Uh, this, is, uh, this costs millions. Yeah. Um, I'm not in a position to, to, to divulge exactly how much it costs, but there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money. Uh, for one camera, it's a lot of money. But uh, besides that, the company invests in, in, in this football, then the returns are the people are watching. Mm. You know? we, we're not going to sit here and, and, and say, well, then we're not going to cover the game next, but it impacts a lot on the things that happen after. That night, I had to make a phone call to get another OB van to cover the next game. Because that van could not do anything in Peter Maris back. That is the impact that you have to deal with on the night. You know? So, yes, unless you educate people, because when you're going to sit here and, 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 and disclose all these amounts, mm. then people are going to say, ah, it's actually that amount, then mm. what happens next? Mm. You know? But we use this equipment, and a lot of people who are operators, they take pride in using this uh, mm. piece of equipment. You know? And to see it being destroyed like that, 
you you feel you really feel for 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 the for the operators all right i mean let's let's shift here because this is exactly what you're talking about this is now fast forward to sunday now sunday just down the highway you've got uh, fans that are saying you know what regardless of what you thugs did in durban we the fans we the supporters we who wear these jerseys with a great deal of pride are going to go to harry Kwala stadium and we are going to go and support the beautiful game of football these tickets have been sold out <coughs> by thursday so you're not going to mess around. And they were doing double uh, ticket deals, Beresburg United. They were saying, buy a ticket for the game on Sunday. And if you buy for Sunday as well as Wednesday, you get a T-shirt for free. So that is the kind of incentive that they were bringing forward. And they were not messing around because this is a team that's on a high. And there's different cultures. There's white, there's black, there's Indian, there's whatever. The Tremendous. Rainbow Nation descended upon Harry Kuala Stadium on Sunday. Yeah. What was nice about Sunday for me was there were a lot of families, mm. you know, the people brought in their kids, which we, sadly this thing happens when football fans are coming into the games, yeah. you know, and a couple of weeks ago we saw a game at Emla's the Kings were listening stadium, it was packed, yeah. and you, you, you see, and the impact of television as well, we show those great pictures to say, people are here. And the innovation, you, you know? look at uh, Kune there, the so-called Kune in the <laughs> yes. stands. Where, where are people seeing uh, Kune uh, doing all that switch on? They watch TV, yeah. they watch, you know, the broadcasters are, are striving to, to, to give people something to talk about uh, for weeks to go. And there, Abo and Chebe, I mean, they've been like uh, lifetime members of what's happening here. Because people, I, I mean, they... they they long for the HD factor. They long for the fact that they get to the stadium early and there's those loud blaring speakers, the music is there and they can sing along. But then what do you do when you go and destroy the very same equipment that brings you that joy? And if there is no sound and there is no music that is being played, people complain and say that it's so boring at the stadium. Yes. We get there, there's nothing to look forward to because you've come early and then you destroy it. So it, it's counterproductive, everything yes. here. Um, as I said, Robert, I think we, as the broadcaster, we have a responsibility to, to educate uh, our fans. Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility to tell our people that, actually, why are we, why are we there as a broadcaster? And as, as Supersport, we've seen, we've grown as a business. And if you look at the success of MTC, we've taken young people and given them opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And n at no point we're there to harm anyone. But in the bigger scheme of things, that's what we want to bring, the beautiful game to the people at home. And I think one of the things that we haven't really spoken much and people would remember um Musa. He used to write Musa on his face. Yes. Bucks fan. Yes. Where is he today? Musa is one of our freelance camera operators and he's he's come through. Uh, he, he got an opportunity to work on MTC there and there. Today Musa is one of the operators uh, on, on Supersport. He works behind the scenes and that's encouraging to say when the opportunities are there, when the time is right, you, you'll be lucky enough to get in, you know, you, but you have to pay dues uh, for you to be able to get there. So, yes, we encourage people that should an opportunity avail itself, so you'll get it in. All right, I mean, this is simply just a, a couple of shots from behind the scenes. And this is where people, and, and, and we all remember Musa, he has his face painted that, he supported Orlando Pirates, and he asked for a simple thing, can I just carry or hold the cable behind which the camera is running on the field because he would see it when he's there supporting his team. So that's a cable basher and he said, okay, fine, that's where I'll start. If there is where I start, what is your bigger ambition? Mm. To become a cameraman. And you, when you become a cameraman, there's a lot of training that goes into it. And there's a lot of responsibility that goes into it. And today, he's no longer in the grandstand like he was every day. Yes. He's now improved, let's say, his life and his livelihood and yes. his family. Yes. I think that's why we talk about the importance of MTC, what MTC has done, not only for, for the players, but for us as a broadcaster as well. We've, we, it's given us an opportunity mm. to give people, you know, I've, I've always say, and I put a lot of pressure on the trainees to say, the minute the game is on Supersport 4, mm. it's a premium game. Whether well, that could be a training, but it becomes a premium game because that's what we do. Mm. We say the world of champions does not, yes, yes, it's still a training exercise, but the minute we put it on TV, there's that added pressure mm. to say, you have to deliver. So we, we, we've seen a lot of people come through, and that's the success story we have to tell our viewers. 
All right, uh, I'll get comments as well from the other gentleman here. Obviously, it's Fiso Mbamba representing Supersport, and they're telling us from a broadcaster's perspective what this really, really means and what it entails as well. There was lots of damage. There was millions of rands worth of damage. Let's not lose sight of that. This is a broadcaster that has showcased across the African continent and beyond what South African football is all about. And we just needed to be proud of it, embrace it, and become a major role player in it. Jimmy Dow, I mean, from your perspective of what you saw and it's not the first time we see it maybe it's a different magnitude of violence that came through what is going through your mind look i think rob um we, we cannot overemphasize the disappointment of what we witnessed mm. uh, and in such a short space of time uh, just now recently chiefs was was fined for a similar kind of act now they've gone exorbitant on it and um it has painted a really bad picture about south africa it also paints a very bad picture about us as people um, in terms of being able to be responsible and to be accountable for our acts and also how we deal with, with, with our emotions because once you, you, your emotions get a better of you, you end up being irrational in your, in your reaction. Mm -hmm. And hence you, see, you have scenes mm -hmm. like those. And they are not good for football. They are not good for us for as a country. They are not good for us in, at a global stage because... Mm -hmm. The product itself gets to be shown at international stages. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why we would never have international programs coming here. It's because of mm -hmm. those kind of... of this. There are other platforms where you can vent your frustrations. Mm -hmm. But to take actions like those, I mean, is really uncalled for. And my only question is, whoever did that, what's their conscience? Why, well, how do they feel? Are they excited about it? Mm -hmm. Are they proud about it? But as a person, I would be very disappointed. All right, disappointed. Let's, let's look at the footballing factors. And, and you were there, William Shaman, throughout the entire weekend in KZN. How much do previous encounters, for example, the Loftus incident? Yes. Cables were being ripped apart. The, the broadcast again affected. And it took something like 14 months for a verdict to come through. A weak one at that. And you were also at Loftus. And then the fans probably think, ah. Nothing's going to ever happen to us. And, and yeah, I mean, we, as we talk about Loftus, I'm showing you the visuals right now of that Loftus situation. Th that is probably one of the biggest challenges, I think, uh, what would have uh, maybe generated the whole scenario to develop into this for me. In as far as this wasn't the first time, not the second time, mm. not the third time, and uh, you think uh, what kind of action would have been taken to make sure that this is silenced completely. And uh, the delay from being able to take that decision could have maybe helped people to believe that never, something, uh, this is never going to be addressed mm -hmm. and never, something is never going to happen to me as an individual that maybe would have promoted this to happen or ignited the scenario to develop into this. And uh, this goes further and further back uh, from the days when uh, we used to play ourselves. We would have been in the forefront of some of this incident, whereby you would have thought maybe with so many lives uh, being lost, then something bigger should have, uh, steps should have been taken to make sure that uh, um, at least it is controlled. You know, I, honestly, I think uh, so many things have been tried by football at large to avoid uh, instances of that, this nature by maybe avoiding the fans that are surrounding the stadium because people press themselves against that and uh, but then you got to increase the presence of security not mm. just ordinary people that you pick mm. from the street people that will actually play their role or their part when the situation arises to that mm. and i feel like maybe that's where uh, as an organization is where uh, we have failed to make sure that it is justified but also robert you're thinking of a psl that has driven so much, that has generated so much money into marketing the game, into what it has developed into. And uh, an incident like that obviously takes all the work, the hard work that has been put in. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just trying to think, this is a game that lately needs so much money to be able to happen in the way that is happening. And uh, it's going to take away the potential sponsors that will be willing maybe to take part. Yeah, I think that's one of the major worries as well as major concerns. Well, one of the persons that's obviously refereed at many different levels, and the minute the seat started burning, I remember the game at FNB Stadium where Trevor Christian uh, was the referee, the match referee on the day. And I said, oh, no, not again. So Ace Novo has refereed many a game, but he's also been a football administrator and uh, 
obviously one of the people that we have here on Extra Time. He'll give us a different perspective, maybe it's just from your side and your learning. Where do you see this in 2018? Wanton destruction of property because you don't like a coach, because you want to drive a certain message to a team that you feel is not listening to your message. What then goes through Ace's mind? It's a feeling of sadness, Rob. Feeling of sadness, but we've got to ask ourselves this question. Is this about football? Has this got to do with football? Is this about Steve Kompela? Is it about Kaiser Chiefs? Or have we become an angry society? Can we delink what happened at Moses Mabida from what happened in my gang in the past couple of days when people went on the rampage and started looting even shops owned by their own people? There was a time, Rob, when we grew up where spectators were allowed to sit around the pitch. Mm. They were not prohibited from running into the pitch as and when a goal was scored. But as soon as those celebrations ended, they would walk out of the pitch and the game would continue. There were no perimeter fences. There was no security to prevent them from sitting as close as possible to the action. Mm -hmm. Now you have beautiful match venues. You have two meter high perimeter fencing. You have uh, hundreds or perhaps even thousands of security personnel around the pitch but you still get people that are so angry as, as to display that level of anger. I mean, there's a security guard that was kicked and had all sorts of missiles thrown onto his uh, uh, limp body lying on the ground with, with such hatred at close range. And it begs this question, is it about Hompela? Is it about chiefs? Is it even about football? Or have we become an angry society? I think part of the thing is it's the case of what is the catalyst? What is the catalyst for it all? You mentioned Mahike and the catalyst is a premier. You mentioned other provinces or maybe other incidents. The catalyst is fees must fall. What, what is the catalyst? Because once it becomes an enabling thing, then society who is angry, then will jump onto the bandwagon and say, this is an opportune moment as well to make our feelings hurt. But is football taking enough responsibility because this is under their watch, this is under their stadium, this is under the pretext of a 90-minute game of football. Is football itself, outside of the beautiful words that are spoken, taking enough responsibility? Rob, I think not. I think when you look at incidents that had happened involving Kaiser Chiefs, in, in, a, in a match played a few days so. before that. And a goal is scored in the very first minute. Mm. That gives you 89 minutes to say, what potentially can we have here? Do we have enough security? Now, I've, I've done some background checks. I know that in terms of the quantity, the security that was there was way above that prescribed for a medium risk match mm. because that match was designated by the South African Police Service as a medium risk match. But the PSL did the right thing in deploying the number of security that would be required for a higher risk match. But quantity does not equal correct utilization. Mm. Now, when you look at correct utilization, you've got to ask yourself, was the security at the venue deployed correctly? Was it under the correct command? But even before you find answers to those strategic questions, was it the correct security personnel, the individual standing and, and, there? And, and that is a strong word and an important word. When you start to mention the security, is the question is, are they security? Are they trained? And when you talk about security, you talk about training. See, like Mr. Bamba was talking about cameramen and talking about the actual people part of production, you need training. You don't just rock up. And there's a lot of rocking up, give you a bib, do your work, hand over the bib, we give you 200 rand and have a wonderful day. That then becomes the problem as well. Tuesday, back down there. Yes. Wednesday, <laughs> back in Maritzburg. Yes. <laughs> now, clearly, Supersport is a production house, major one of international proportion. You showed the will, 
to find another van to go to Peter Maritzburg. Yes. Now, these teams are playing down there. Chiefs plays against Arrows. There's a new coach, the bench. Yes. What are you expecting? What changes in terms of your approach? I think for us, we'll take the measures that are necessary to make sure that uh, the crew is protected. Yeah. Uh, and PSL has committed themselves as well to make sure that there will be enough security, mm. uh, there's, there will be enough uh, SAPS uh, personnel. So we will go there with that mindset to say we, we have a job to do. Mm. Our job is to show the beautiful game. Yes, we will take the necessary measures. As I said, I, I became a psychologist on Sunday, mm. trying to calm people down to say, guys, we have a job to do. If anyone is uncomfortable, yes, you will be relieved. No one is holding a gun at anyone's head. But we just have to manage the situation together with the stakeholders. Everyone is aware what, what has happened. So we will be very, yes, as I said, <coughs> our first priority is to go to a game. Sure. And then anything else after that, it will be uh, taken care of. All right. So, and I think just to, on behalf of all the people that watch your World of Champions, that watch your Super Disc, I want to commend you and your team. <clears throat> Those are very tough decisions that have to be taken yes. on the day, but you made it happen. So yeah. well done on that. And let's keep the fire burning. Yes. That's, let's that's keep it going. Let's keep it Thank going. You. And and as testimony to that again, uh, Uluvo Mvoga Mlobeli says that well, I'm a cable basher too. The atmosphere alone is so inspiring. I feel alive again. Supersport will give you a lifeline opportunity. So that's a tweet that's just popped up. Zaki Matebula says that's exactly the way I grew up. When team scores goals, we are getting inside to celebrate with the players. Agree with you with Ace Nobo right there. Um, Leonard says the guy that you interviewed before the game talking about Steve Compella was already drunk. That's an opinion here on Twitter. I'm not making the stuff up. You can rewind, you can PVR. I don't know if you can do a... I don't know if you can do a... What do you call these tests? Breathalyzer. Breathalyzer <laughs> yeah. via the screen. But uh, <laughs> for whatever it is, it is what it is. Mr. Mbappa, thank you so much for thank coming you, Robert. through. Thank you, All right, so yeah. there you have a breakdown as well. Executive producer, as far as football is concerned, right here across at Supersport. Uh, Swiss Mbappa joining us right here on Extra Time. We're going to continue with the show as well. So much to talk about. So much is happening on social media. Thank you so much. Keep it coming because, you know what, you've been on uh, 30 minutes, but it's only just beginning. Extra Time.